Like waiting for Guthman, Gotto and a starter fall, Australians have been waiting forever for the all new Toyota BZ4X electric SUV. And it's still not here. Well, actually it's here in Japan because I'm standing next to a Japan domestic market version uh, that with a few minor specification changes will be pretty much identical to the vehicle that launches in Australia next February to take on heavy hitters like the Kia EV6, Tesla Model Y and Hyundai Ioniq 5. But there's something else as well. We're at a four-wheel drive track and Toyota is about to release a four-wheel drive concept known as the Land Cruiser SE, which promises to be the 2026 Prado electric vehicle. I'm looking around because there are Toyota executives around me. Anyway, so what better way to have a taster of what that EV vehicle will be like off-road than the car that probably shares a lot of its architectural elements, the BZ4X, around here at a four-wheel drive proving ground here in Nagoya. Anyway, that's a long intro, but let's drive this thing and check out its 4x4 chops. Even Toyota claims the new BZ4X is off-road capable and in fact calls it one of the world's first off-road capable 4x4 electric SUVs for family buyers. <laughs> That's quite the qualified claim. Clearly Toyota is keen to debunk notions that EVs can't go bush. That's why it put the Land Cruiser SE Concept SUV front and centre on stage at last month's Japan Mobility Show in Tokyo. Longer and larger than the coming 2024 Prado, this near production ready concept car breaks from tradition by switching to a monocoque body rather than the usual body on frame construction, revealing a depth of change never before experienced or expected from a vehicle wearing the iconic badge. Furthermore, when the production version arrives from 2026, it will usher in Toyota's next generation of solid state battery tech, which promises range of up to a thousand kilometers and much faster charging times. The Land Cruiser SE concept sits on a longer wheelbase than the new Prado, has three rows of seating and an electric motor offering what Toyota says is a high torque driving experience. And if you're a Prado traditionalist, don't worry, Toyota reckons that both will run alongside each other when the electric version arrives from 2026. Before all that though, let's briefly outline some changes that have been made to Toyota's first EV even before it reaches Australia. You see, the BZ4X has been on sale elsewhere in the world since early last year and it's copped some flack for failing to achieve its claimed battery range of between 470 and 516 kilometers WLTP. Stung by this widespread criticism, especially in cold weather regions, Toyota has incorporated some software updates that optimize various systems like the climate control so as to sap less electricity out of the battery during so-called real-world driving scenarios. So, while the range figures stay the same, the BZ4X now gets closer to Toyota's claims. Plus, it now charges faster in colder weather, which is also handy. Otherwise, the model Australia is getting in February should be the same as before. Toyota hasn't released any information on features or specification, but the EU front-wheel drive version, which should be similar to ours, offers 150 kilowatts of power and 266 Nm of torque, while the all-wheel drive car I'm driving here in Japan offers 160 kilowatts and about 337 newton meters spread across two 80 kilowatt electric motors one on each axle this should be good for a 0 to 100 time of 6.9 seconds against the front drivers 7.5 seconds and a one pedal regenerative braking mode means that up to 80 percent of speed can be washed off thanks to 0.15 g of resistance the battery, by the way, is a 71.4 kilowatt hour water-cooled lithium-ion battery pack. It sits under the floor between the axles for a low center of gravity within a revised version of the Toyota new global architecture. It's dubbed ETNGA and it helps provide a stable, flat handling and road holding base. Suspension consists of struts up front and a double wishbone rear end arrangement. 
For EU markets, Toyota states that its electric SUV averages 14.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. With the 11 kilowatt AC charger expected for Australian bound versions, plugging it in at home would require about 33 hours to replenish the battery from empty to full, or 10 and a half hours with an optional 7 kilowatt wall box while using a common 50 kilowatt DC fast charger takes a little over an hour to get the battery from 10 to 80% capacity or half that time if you manage to find a 150 kilowatt super fast charger. That BZ4X name, by the way, refers to Beyond Zero Emissions 4 crossover, with the 4 equating this to being RAV4 sized. As such, we're looking at a very progressively designed, handsomely proportioned 5-seater offering a beautifully finished interior with plenty of space inside, an attractively minimalist dashboard layout, your usual array of digitized instruments and multimedia touchscreen features, as well as a cargo capacity of 452 litres. There's no word as yet about warranty or servicing schedules for Australia, but rest assured that the BZ4X achieves a maximum 5-star Euro NCAP crash test rating in Europe. More information, including the all-important pricing, model grade and specification details, will be revealed closer to the launch date. Finally, a word about the Toyota EV's off-road capability claims. Developed with Subaru, which offers the slightly restyled Solterra that's also heading down under, the all-wheel drive system is said to give, and I'm quoting Toyota here, genuine, class-leading off-road driving capability a market first for an all-electric SUV. Dubbed X-Mode, which should be familiar to all you XV, Crosstrek, Forester and Outback owners out there, it offers a trio of settings, light snow slash mud, deep snow and deep mud. There's also a hill descent and hill ascent control system. Plus, for the record, ground clearance is 177mm, approach angle is 17.7 .7 degrees, departure angle 25.4 degrees, and weighting depth is 500 millimeters. Now, let's get behind the wheel of tomorrow's Toyota Land Cruiser Lite EV. I'm finding myself driving the new Toyota BZ4X in a situation where a lot of potential buyers uh, probably won't find themselves in, and that is on a proper 4x4 course here in Japan. Uh, this is a true test of this car's uh, four-wheel drive credentials because even though this electric vehicle is competing with uh, the Tesla Model Y as a um, as an urban and grand touring uh, five-seater medium-sized SUV, uh, what it does actually uh, highlight is this the, the confidence that Toyota has off-road. Now, this of course isn't a ladder frame chassis vehicle of any sort and um, we're not saying that this will be what the next generation uh, Land Cruiser EVs will be necessarily, but you can be sure that the technology underneath or some of the architectural technology in the EV versions of the vehicle that will eventually be the uh, Land Cruiser S slash Prado EV um, may leverage the technology from this car. So we're going up a fairly steep uh, hill here and it's a little bit wet and there are potholes plenty. It's something that you just wouldn't necessarily expect to see any vehicle that isn't a proper four-wheel drive. Now I'm driving this uh, over a quite a steep ascent and now descent and I have to be less gingerly than I would, you would think I would be because it actually has the capability, it actually has the capability to, to achieve um, progress through these courses without getting stuck, that's quite astounding really. Um, there's a lot of electronic stuff doing the work and you can, you can certainly feel it and hear it and uh, Torque is being shuffled between the front and rear wheels as required for better traction. Um, uh, but there's enough ground clearance and, uh, and the approach angles and departure angles don't seem to be 
too much of an issue for uh, a course where you know you can you saw for yourself uh, possibly that there are 70 series Land Cruisers and Suzuki Jimny's and that sort of thing um, also using this track uh, quite impressive um, there also seems to be uh, a fair amount of wheel articulation but like Land Cruiser-esque style but certainly enough to get you further than you might expect with 160 kilowatts of combined front and rear motor power there certainly seems to be enough muscle to get us up the, uh, the hill that we are, that we're going up now so surprising agility and alacrity around here and the steering is nicely weighted as well now I'm uh, relying on the um, the hill descent control to get me down a very steep hill. Do we know what the gradient here is? 20. 20. 20 degrees? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you listen to some of the sounds the V4, VZ4X makes. So I gently, but confidently, tackle a downhill maneuver. Now this is the X mode system that uh, was co-developed with Subaru. Subaru did a lot of the off-road um, uh, tuning and testing for, the, for, the, for this vehicle. And of course the Subaru Solterra is the sister car of this and that experience certainly shows even though that too is also of course a monocoque body of the vehicle. Um, so now we're driving through a puddle and yeah going up and down a smaller crest and this thing has just walked it it's it's better than I expected and actually a lot of fun so I hope Toyota um, does a similar demonstration when this car launches in February in Australia even during this short but challenging 4x4 course drive it's clear that the BZ4X has got what it takes to be a, a credible off-road performer and that's impressive for an all-electric family focused EV for well-heeled consumers in Australia but more than that it bodes really well for the new Land Cruiser Prado EV coming in 2026 because clearly even with a monocoque body and an all-electric architecture these things know how to go off-road don't forget you can read the full details at carsguide.com.au and as always, thanks for watching.